All right, so it's six o'clock. Um, so I'm gonna get started. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to webinar number eleven in our Responsible Hillside Living series. I'm Robert Thompson. Rachel, let's make sure we mute everyone. And today we're talking security, securing your hillside paradise. Now, our guest is Mr. Andre Richards from On What Security Solutions Limited. Um, Andre has been in security for the last 30 years and he does private security technology setup. And he's very knowledgeable and we, just, we, we wanted him on for the longest while and finally we got to pin him down. And here we are, Andre, welcome. Hi, thanks. So we have, <clears throat> it's going to be a kind of back and forth conversation. We encourage all the people on to ask questions. Uh, but what I'm starting with is, Andre, what specific security vulnerabilities does a hillside home have, in your opinion? Well, I mean, it's 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 really no different than uh, uh, any other um, location where a, a a house you know a, a house is built is is just that um things you have to take into consideration you know are you at the furthest end what's behind you but if it's uh if it's it's a lot of um trees and foliage that that blocks um you know you seeing beyond your fence line if it's a wall that you have up some people just it's a it's a thin chain link fence um so it, it kind of all depends but um I, as i say it ain't no different than than having a, a a house on the flat because it's it's still accessible so the the only difference is is that um there's a there's a element of of let's say risk whereas if you're backing a, as i say maybe a, a hill beyond yours is a tree line that kind of stuff um you have to also look at um if there's any construction going on in the area um what does the the neighborhood look like um at certain hours but that 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 also is is important because sometimes you wind up in communities where people um it's a new community, so you have a, a younger demographic living in that area. Um, and what tends to happen in, in in a lot of these places when you when you have a working public is generally the place is quiet during the day because everybody's out of work. So the the that community is 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 pretty desolate. So I've had situations, I've seen situations and heard of situations in the past where you had vehicles drive up breaking the people's homes and was taking furniture, going out with with furniture. I mean, we're talking about fridge and stove and, I don't know, they going with everything. And, and you had people in the neighborhood seeing the thing happening and they thought the person was moving out. Didn't realize that they were actually being broken into, but the way it was so brazenly done, you know, it's like it, it looked like if, you know, people were moving out. So, you know, situations like that is what you have to look at where you have a neighborhood and it's there's really very limited activity during the day. I mean, uh, it, some of the places like in, um, let's say like Santa Cruz, maybe like Paxville or so, those are, there's working class people. So they, they out early in the morning and come back late in the afternoon. So there's, there's very little happening during the course of the day. And that's where they have a lot of, you know, of, of you know, that kind of activity during the day when they're not there. Mm, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So that segues into I I I was thinking about scenarios. So let's say a scenario one is a, uh, you know, people who leave work, you know, leave home early and come back late. What sort of protocols and systems do you recommend they put in place? To kind of secure themselves 
I would say the, the, the best thing that you should be able to see outside your premises. So I'm not a big fan of people who putting up um eight foot and nine feet walls. I mean, you should be able to see outside your premises because it's uh, you have an idea of what's happening around you. Um, though it may be that people can see what you're doing on the inside or they can see what's happening around your premises. But it, besides that, it gives you an idea of what's happening on the outside. So I would tell people you can have a low wall fence going up or wrought iron work. Um, you can have like your, your spikes on the top to prevent people from climbing over. Um, but make it difficult. So there are ways that you can um, you know, align the bars to prevent people from using it as a as a way to step over. Um, an automatic gate, I would say, is an important part because then that way you don't find yourself coming out to close a gate, mm -hmm. which could put you at risk and also coming in. And um, leaving and, and coming, if there are different routes, especially coming home, if there are different routes that you can take coming home, I would tell people, change it up. Also, on your way home, just casually look in your rearview mirror to see what's what's coming. If any vehicle look like it's following you home. Um, because I don't mean to sound paranoid, but this this is real. This this is a real situation happening here now. So, I mean, you have to give yourself the best chance possible to to mitigate circumstances like that. So, right. so what are the systems that could be put in place to kind of increase your chances of either holding out for a response or deterring, you know, the event. I would say an alarm system is a is a is a is a good good opportunity is is a good thing to have, or at least something that they can create an alarm, because that we know you're alerting the neighbors as well. So if it's not an alarm system, you you have those air horns that they use a lot. You just need something that where you can wake up people in your neighborhood so that you know we could you could be in a position where that more people are aware of what's going on at your home. So anything that could could create an alert or an alarm is a is is an is a is an excellent, excellent point. Um I know it's a thing for us here. I mean, wrought iron work um, on your around your windows. Make sure your door is properly secure. Make sure you have a properly secured door. I mean, I know are people doing that a lot now, but you still find people that you know don't properly secure windows and doors. So it, I, I I just have to mention that. Um, a CCTV system is also a good option as well too because. I mean, and and it's all based on, I mean, what people can afford, of course. Um, you have you have CCTV systems now that do a little more than they did before. So you have CCTV systems now that that can send alerts to your phone. Um, you have CCTV systems. You have, you have cameras that that trigger alarms on the actual cameras themselves. So you walk into your, to somebody gets into your premises and the camera pick them up, the camera actually triggers an alarm. So it lets people know you in the house and let the perpetrator know that they have been seen and the lights come on and they have been identified. So as I say, one, those are also early forms of detection. So, I mean, it, it's, it's what you can afford. What you can afford is 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 you know it gives you the I would say budget if you're looking at if if money is a situation and somebody really want to to, to have a, a a choice of something I would I would easily say hands down CCTV because there's no point an alarm going off and you can't verify what it is going on. Because now you still have to go down and look 
when something goes off because you have to determine at that point if it's a false alarm or if it's a genuine alarm. So cameras can afford you that. Um, and they kind of give you a little bit of an early detection. I mean, if you buy the right systems, that way you can see when they enter your yard rather than you're trying to break your door down. And you can use that in a combination of like an air horn where that you can alert the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And let them know that. But it, it, one of the, the, the best, best, best um, ways to, to mitigate these issues is to have a, a, a wholesome community where they create a group chat, you know, something happened in the street, everybody a little vigilant, you know, things could reach around to everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may be in a position where you could see somebody in the neighbor yard, you make a phone call to them, they see somebody in the yard, they come to you, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So you have that kind of relationship in our community it can be very, very, very helpful mm -hmm. to the, the entire community. Right, excellent. Strange vehicles driving around, you know, somebody post that up on the chat, I seen a red car and, da -da -da, and, and it could come down to the end where you provide in footage to the police. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have a question. Um, uh, this person's having trouble with deciding you know, what kind of... So the question is, in addition to a blue horn, I have a hard time navigating which alarm system to go with. Is it better an individual security camera or a company that does it? I just get stuck knowing what and who to go with. Of course, budget depending. Mm -hmm. I would say I would say go with the more reputable companies or at least the ones that you have gotten recommendations from because there's a lot of people offering CCTV systems but not everyone is going to pay attention to what you're looking for. So there's a there's a huge difference between a te technician and a and a security professional. Because a technician will just tell you you need cameras here, there, and everywhere. But a security professional will tell you cameras may be part of your solution as well as you may need to secure this door or you may need to cut the grass that's right up against your fence. So, you know, it's it's a combination of things. So I, I wouldn't tell somebody, you know, well, you need 15 cameras around your house. I will tell you, you know, maybe what you need is a combination of, of let's say, um, protecting your fence. You know, um, some people, a lot of people using walls because they want, that level of privacy, you know, put some spikes on the walls, that kind of thing. So what, what you're looking at is that what the the budget that the person has and have a, a sit down and have an understanding of what it is that you what is your greatest fear? So that way we could we can figure out what we can work with with you. Right, right. So you know, it's it's a it's a it's a combination of things. Some people may say, well, all right, you know, it's like I want to see cameras from my house. Yeah, but you're pushing a gate to go in. Yeah. So you know. So the so I have another scenario. So let's say you have you, you have an elect you have a automatic gate to get in to the site, but mm -hmm. then you also have a have a a, a, a raised garage door. That's a lot of time. Yes. So you're vulnerable within that time, are you not? Yes, you are. So what's but, what's what's the best thing to do in that scenario? Um what would be the best case scenario in a situation like that? This is, I mean, if you could afford to have a a a, a swing gate and a garage door. Then I do believe you should have the money for a CCTV system as well, too, because that will certainly be helpful while you're heading home. You pull up just before you reach home and you check your cameras on your phone and make sure everything looks all right. You know, I, I try to tell people stay away from a lot of trees in your yard and bushes because there's places people could hide. You know, try and keep your 
your, your, your perimeter wall free so that you could, you know, you could see what's going on. So I will tell people, invest in a CCTV system. Before you reach home, you just pull up and you just check. You surveil. You, you look at it, see, you know, if everything looks okay. And if that's fine. Uh, but you also pay attention to as well too to make sure you're alone coming in. And there's nobody behind you. There's nobody trailing you. I mean, I, I'm 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 saying it, but it sounds it, it it sounds like if it's a little bit paranoid. But we are at this point now where you have to be a little more vigilant. So just having these systems in place will better protect you. So you see vehicles on your street that you're not accustomed to seeing. Nothing ain't wrong with you driving past your house and just check the vehicle because the vehicle might be right in front of your house. Or maybe the house after you. I mean, if you don't recognize the vehicle or you're not seeing, you're seeing people sitting in the vehicle, I will tell you, be cautious. Or maybe drive past and see what happens because they may be just waiting for you. So as I say, it, it, you have to be cautious. Yeah, you have to have your antennas up. You have to be, you have to be always thinking. You have to be, I wouldn't say paranoid, but I would say being fearful and scared is not a bad thing. Right. It makes you alert and it makes you aware. Okay. Now, what sort of um kind of overt and covert systems? Which is the kind of better system to go with or lean towards if you're, I mean, one, surveilling your property and two, trying to get, you know, an alarm out? I would say overt is better because it's 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 better for you to let people know before rather than wait till they get in to then let them know that they've been seen or you they, they have been identified or they have been, you know they have been seen. So I would say anything overt mm -hmm. and overt comes with um, spikes on your fence, mm -hmm. ca carrying up your walls, or if you're not carrying up your walls, carry up your, your wrought iron, put some spikes on the top, make it difficult for them to get in. Don't make it easy for them and and then when they get in, you know, I would tell people another thing that works well some people like it, some people don't. Dogs. They thieves, bandits, they inherently fray, are afraid of dogs. I don't know what about dogs in this in in with, with our people here in Trinidad. And part of, of 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 what as a security practitioner is that you, you need to understand the the demographics of the people who commit in crime. There are a few things that they are afraid of, and one is dogs. That's why usually when you see you find your dogs poisoned, you know the next step is they come in for you. Mm. So it and it it happens in most cases within a two week span of mm -hmm. your dogs being poisoned to when this happens. So I will tell people having dogs is a great deterrent inside and outside. Mm. It's a great deterrent because you get that early detection. And also just, just the, the physical nature of dogs. And they don't have to be Rottweiler and Pitbulls. A potong is the, <laughs> is the worst. They're noisy. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And now, they wake you up all hours in the night. <laughs> yeah. Now we have a comment from, from, from um, someone mm -hmm. that I want to kind of speak to. So on a hillside, you mm -hmm. the advantage I think you have is limit you depending on how steep your site is access mm -hmm. is limited so basically you probably have one maybe one or two points of access because on the steep side unless they come with climbing equipment okay you know now yeah. how often is it that people are you know coming unless it's planned coming with equipment to you know repel or you know ascend <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But how many cases have you kind of like dealt with where or seen where it's an organized 
um, sort of hit something like that? Um, you don't see so much that in communities like that. Where you see, where you see it more organized is people who live in apartment complexes, and uh, the the way they. The, the way the, the apartment complex is uh, uh, structured, people have, have um, balconies. So what they tend to do is just move from one to the next through the balcony. Because mm. most of the times now, if if they're going to hit a home, it's just one and go. They, they, you don't have that kind of a, of a, you know, like multiple homes in an area that, that people will attack all at once. No. Because the element of surprise by the time you hit the second home is gone. So mm -hmm. you're going to hit and go. You're not going to stick around. But in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the apartment complex kind of arrangement where that, um, where the, the, let's say a balcony is not to the roadside or where the parking is, is in that situation where it's facing the steep part of the hill. So mm -hmm. you always find that a lot of the times people will, leave the balcony door open because the last thing you're thinking is somebody can come to the, you know, scale up the pillar to get to your balcony, but they forget your next door neighbor balcony right there too. Yeah. So it's just a hop over yeah. and get to you. So you have to take that into consideration. When you look at places like the, the, the towers in Westmoreland, you can see all the banisters are, are pretty close. You get to one and you could just step over to the next balcony. Yeah, but they're not Spider Man. They're not going to be jumping over from the top bar. No, 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 no. But what we're looking at is that if you get into an apartment, you could then move around from there. Yeah. And the the idea of the element of surprise is now that because the last thing anybody is looking at is you come in from the balcony side, you three stories up, four stories up. The last thing somebody thinking somebody coming through the balcony. But what they didn't realize is that if somebody gets into one of the apartments they can come across to you because it has happened in the past mm -hmm. yeah now, so now we got another question now not a lot of people like burglar proofing right what mm -hmm. so if let's say you don't want burglar proofing and you're you willing to spend to not do that what sort of i mean i know there's i mean you can get bulletproof glass you get you know shatterproof glass what you look skeptical about, you know. Um, th there are options where there's, but I mean, all of those. Um. Time. And opportunity. Can defeat all. But even but burg all, even burglar proofing. Yeah, even burglar proofing. Mm -hmm. Even burglar proofing. So that's why you know. Uh, an alarm system or a CCTV system that sends you alerts is helpful. An alarm system will now send an alert or an alarm to a security company and they will then respond without you having to look at a phone. So that is helpful. Um, but where if somebody looking at aesthetics and they don't like the look of wrought iron, I mean, they have stylish ways of doing it, but if somebody don't like it, there's security tint. Well, not tint, but there's um security protection film that you can actually put on the glass. And the glass is not exactly shatterproof, but it takes a little more to, to break that glass. It requires a little more to have it broken, but it's expensive. When you say it, expensive, it, what's a ballpark? Um... I haven't seen that price in a while. That may be like, I don't know. It could be probably about, about 50 or 35 US a foot. Okay. And uh, let's say you live on a single lot, two bedroom house, and you're looking to do flat something. Two, sorry. Hmm? Flat. Some people um, like... Let's say sorry. flat. Let's say flat. Okay. Right? What sort of a budget should you consider for a covert system 
to kind of give you that early warning slash a higher chance? You know, not going crazy, just. Okay. Um, compound is fenced, right? Or oh, it's not okay. fenced because all these things are taken into consideration. Let's when assume you're... worst case scenario, not fenced. Let's, let's not do fenced. worst case. Not fenced. <laughs> um, not fenced. I would say CCTV first. Alarm system second. CCTV could run you up about. I mean, for for the ones that that offer you early detection as well, that will one provide you alerts. Two could um provide early detection, alarm warnings, that kind of stuff. Um, those can run you up. I would say about. I would say probably like about. Fifteen. 20 grand, about 20,000, 15, 20,000. Mm -hmm. And those would be, those kind of cameras, as I said before, where they, they, they like an alarm system, they, once it, it detects human movement, it triggers an alarm, it lets the, the neighborhood know by an alarm sound that, and alerts both your neighbors and the person <laughs> that they've been. Mm -hmm. Those are more on the expensive side, but it, you can have cheaper CCTV systems and you could mirror that with an alarm system so you can have both. But I would tell anybody that, you know, um, monitoring is, I would say, or, or response could be, is an essential part of it. Depends if you're living in a place where that, you know, where it's, it's lonely or there's much houses in that area, that kind of thing. I would tell you, Having some kind of a response is critical. So what about the alarm system budget? Well, the alarm system budget, I mean, I would say probably board. Hmm. Ballpark. Don't stress to me. I would say probably about maybe 8,000. Just a covered doors windows a few windows um a motion sensor mm -hmm. in by the house and a siren on a keypad yeah mm -hmm. it's gonna be about that depends but it would vary depends on the amount of windows and doors okay. that you have entering and exiting your premises all right so last question before i open up to for everybody's questions there's a few coming in um are you using CCTV as a general term for kind of like cameras, mm -hmm. camera systems, or CCTV is a, like a system of, can you explain that? All right, CCTV is basically an acronym for closed circuit television. Okay. So what it is basically is a, having a camera that's connected to a recording device that records what the camera sees. So you can have multiple cameras, which will carry all that recording back to, will carry what it sees, what that camera sees, and it's that is recorded on the, the um, that recording device. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm gonna open up for some questions now. Um, Tristan, I saw you have a question. Can you come off mute and talk to us? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Right. One of my questions was um more of um with regards to blending into the landscape. I've heard of people using like Bougainville or fence walls or putting cameras and tree systems and whatnot, but I was just wondering if you had anything else that you know, more solutions that blend in and if you would recommend like a wireless camera system. Wireless cameras. They work. They work well as they work well. I would say they work well as as well because they're all part of it. Um. So it is. It is a. It is also a good solution. They they also have. They also have those that work with solar as well too. So I mean, you could you can hide them away in a, in a tree. 
you know you have more options and, and it's an option if you don't want to have if if you may have had a a, a house that's already finished and you don't want mm -hmm. to do all this cabling around the house that kind of stuff Correct. so that a wireless camera with uh solar capabilities is a is an excellent option yeah that's a good idea my next question and i think you just kind of answered it there um a big fear of mine is like let's say on a hillside you tend to be more isolated less neighbors mm -hmm. um when electricity is gone i feel like you're a bit more at risk and i i mean i was kind of lost on like what kind of extra barriers could you put in place the solar cameras would have, was a good idea yes they they are but the 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 issue that you're still going to have is it i mean you 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 there are some ways well there are a few ways around it but you still come back that if you have no electricity it all depends on 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 what that means because we all have phones that may work through cell towers and hopefully that during your power outage that didn't happen so you, you still have something that you can work with um i would say in a situation like that having a ups with some standby power on it or i mean some people are now looking into buying generators right that will provide some level of standby power but i mean is to understand the the community that you're in and how well the the electricity service is to know what kind of standby time you're looking at. If electricity usually goes on in two hours, it's fixed. Then you can you can then look at a, a at maybe three hours as your standby time. So you still have your your Wi-Fi still working, your cameras still working, you know, um, your automatic gate still working. So, because we're looking at one part of you being home when it happens, but you have to look at the other part of if you're not home and you place in darkness. So you coming into to, to, to really a dark environment. So, you know, this yeah. this will be helpful to you. Yeah. Yeah. Solar, yeah. solar lights, that kind of stuff. It, 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 really, it really helps. As yeah. you say it, I think I would get a good peace of mind if yeah. electricity went and all my cameras were powered by solar DVR is running. I have one screen showing me everything. I yeah. feel a lot more secure. Open up the windows and, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. feel a bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. so yeah, good suggestion. Thanks, Tristan. All right. So we have another question here from Sidrian. Sidrian, you want to come off mute and talk to us? Sure. Um, um, hi, everybody. So in a case where there's a very large lot and, you know, as Robert said before, some of it might not be easily accessible, but would the recommendation be to put a fence around the the immediate yard, the, the immediate area of the house? Would that be the recommendation? And I just wanted to get a sense of what should a fence look like in order for it to be secure? How high, what material and so on? I would say the uh, you are correct the the per the the fence should be around the uh, close to the perimeter of the house whatever that you because you may have a large lot but you may not be occupying the entire lot as as you've mentioned so it is you should fence the area that you're living in um it depends on what you want to do as a fence. If you want to do traditional wrought iron, because it all comes back down to aesthetics, what it is that you you like. I mean, some people prefer wrought iron work. Some people prefer um, the security fences now. So you have those security fences, unlike a chain link fence, where that you, where that you can easily use a, a pliers or something to cut the those security fences the the links are a lot closer so it's harder to use a pliers to cut it because the the links are that close uh, i believe a lot of schools use them now those the, those security fences and a wire so, wall things wire yeah the wire walls mm -hmm. so that that's an option but 
it, it, and then you could grow plants you could grow plants along it as well yes um so you can i mean some people have seen use bougainvillea as a as a security for their fence line they because they didn't like fence but bougainvillea could be could be tough to get through mm -hmm. if it's if it's if it's planted correctly it's basically a hedge and and it it, it prevents it it causes it has its own barrier it is a barrier by itself right so for people who don't want to have a fence so it's it's a bit overt but covert in that sense so bougainville is a is a nice for people is a nice option because of of all the picker and it's also pretty to look at yeah i mean it requires some maintenance mm -hmm. but it's a but that sort of fence takes a while to come in so you know it that, that would be I would consider a long-term solution. Yeah. A very long-term solution. Now, we have another question here from Rihanna. Rihanna, you want to come off mute and... So, I think if I can change my question. Sure. Um, I wish I thought of security first in my design. Um, So, I have a very limited budget and I don't know which one to go for first. Um, Should I install a gate into the property? Should I put a wall? Should I put a wrought iron on the front door? I know you said the CCTV and then the alarm system. I can't do all of it now, but which one, Andre, would you go for first as the key <laughs> priority? I have the dog, I have the pot tongue, so that's one thing I do have. Um, but what would you do? Or prioritize an order? I would say, okay, so you're looking at... Uh, I would say... If you have the dogs, the dogs are going to be your, your 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 first alert. I would say start with the automatic gate because it's going to be important for you to get in and out of your premises quickly. And it's going to be a great help when it's pouring rain that you don't have to come out and push a gate. So I would say start with the with the automatic gate first. So you can get in and out quickly. And the next thing I would say is, if you have the dogs, I would say definitely a next option should be because the dogs represent an alarm. The next thing that you'd be looking at is a CCTV system, which is going to be, I mean, it priced reasonably. The only thing is that I, I didn't have a sense of what the, the external walls were like. What are the, the the height of the external walls around that around your premises? I have only one retaining wall on a slope, and the other side is completely um into the forest. So there's none on the other side. Okay. Also off steeply. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, um, your dogs are they going to be at your first line of defense. And I would say the automatic gate first. The next I would say would be the CCTV system because that is going to help you where you when you hear your dogs barking and they may be barking at different places around your home is so that you can see what they're looking at. And I would say third tier would then be um, is it that you you let me just find out a few things. Do, do you like being enclosed? Um, no, I don't. But as a female, I know it's really important to have those um, defense lines in place. I just installed some solar sensor lights. That's mm -hmm. been kind of nice too. Um, mm -hmm. Floodlights for the pathways mm -hmm. and I'm very cautious of the bush growing as well on the other side. So these, this has been super helpful, um, definitely so far. Yes. I mean, have any lights around the compound as well too that to make sure that it's lit. That 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 would be I didn't I didn't talk about that and I probably should have because I, I was kind of thinking that would be part of part of what people would be using or what you should have around your house. You should have around your house lit. Mm -hmm. Um so that 
that I didn't speak to, but having lights around your house where it's relatively lit um, is also a great deterrent. Um, if you may be concerned with the electricity bill, having lights that come on, those motion sensing lights, those are also pretty good because as these as as the perpetrators move in your com uh, move around your yard, the lights come on, kind of creates a, a a deterrent in its own right. Mm. You see lights come on, you know, yeah. Is either you stick around or you 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 run away. Right. All right. Because you've been spotted. So, but for somebody who, for you who don't really want to have to be closed in by walls, I would tell you start probably looking at Bogan Villa. Start <laughs> planting a few around. <laughs> I'll get on it and I'll get <laughs> to Bev Palm. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Any other? But what you need is something with a lot of lot of picker or spikes or something to prevent them from being able to go through. Right. All right. So we're, coming, we're coming down to the end, and I wanted to thank you, Andre, for coming on, yeah. and everybody else who came on. And we'll be sending out an email with Andre's contacts if anybody else wants to have a conversation with him. And Andre, any last, any last words or advice you want to give? What I, what I would say, don't let money be the motivational factor where security is concerned. Mm. Seek a security professional so that they can help you in regards to this. This is not something you should be trying to do on your own because it, it you you could be spending money in the wrong place. Right. So there are a lot of people outside there, including myself, who could come and have a look at your property and say, and could give you some advice, all based on budget. But it will all be based upon what what your fear level is like, and that would then determine whether or not we're looking at securing any perimeter, um, whether or not we we use any electronic security. Or maybe the combination of both, but in on a in a smaller scale, budget scale. So we may be looking at we may have a back wall, and we may look at maybe protection for the back wall that's less seen than the front. So you know little things like that that you can you can you can work around to mix and match your budget. But I'll tell you, it's scary out there, and it's getting right. a little worse. So I would say my final words will be always be vigilant. Always be looking around. Always observe. Always watch. Keep your eyes out because mm -hmm. it could be you. Okay. All right. So that's it. Thanks a lot for coming on, no Andre. Thanks again. And we'll be posting no this on YouTube, and you could access it on YouTube for you know in like a week. All right. And stay tuned to the next one. All right, Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Bye. Bye.